In this GeoMapEp tutorial on the Ocean Floor Drilling Portal, we'll explore in detail the functionality of the Faunal and Floral Range Charts interface. With the Ocean Floor Drilling Portal loaded in the GeoMapEp window, we select a particular hole here, and we see from the table below that this corresponds to hole 21-205 and we're going to explore the range charts for that hole. We activate the range chart function using this button in the table toolbar. When the button is clicked, the range chart window opens. As we'll see, there's lots of information that's presented to us in this range charts window. So we'll go through the components one by one. Let's start by using the drop-down menu at the top of the range chart window to choose the fauna or flora that we're interested in. In this case, we'll look for information related to nanofossils. So we go to the drop-down menu, select nanofossils, and we see that the range chart for nanofossils in that particular hole has been loaded. As the cursor is moved up and down in this range chart window, the red line moves with the cursor and the location of the red line in that particular hole is described by the three numbers at the bottom left of the range chart window. The depth within the core indicated by the red line is given by the first number in meters below the seafloor. In this case, 64 and a half meters below the seafloor. The second number, the one in the middle here, reports the age at that particular depth in the core. Here, it's just over 10 million years. And the third number here gives us the backtrack depth of that particular horizon. The backtrack depth is expressed in meters below the paleo sea surface, hence the units of MBSS, meters below sea surface. And it's calculated by removing the effects of thermal subsidence and by removing the loading effects of the overlying sediments. In this case, the backtrack depth in the core is calculated as just under 4,000 meters below the Paleo Sea surface. At the left side of the range chart window is a depth scale in meters below the sea floor. And next to that, these shaded grey boxes show the presence of cores at their respective depths. The numbers in the grey boxes indicate the core numbers. Next to that, in this area here, is a function that provides a description of the core, but please note that the function will be activated in a future release of GeoMapApp. In the middle of the range chart window here are listed the epoch and stage names. Finally, the faunal ranges are shown as the thin grey lines here in the range chart and the black dots, like the lines of black dots here, indicate the locations of samples within the core. The grey vertical lines in the range chart show the extent within all of the cores for this particular hole of each of the species that was identified, and clicking on the dots gives us information about the species. For example, let's say we're interested in what was found in this region of the core here. When we start clicking, we look in the lower left corner and we see the name of the particular species changing for each of the vertical grey line range charts. We also notice the vertical blue line. That's there to help highlight the range of that particular identified species. If we move the cursor, we also see a horizontal blue line, and that's designed to help provide a reference within the core. Now let's look at the information in the lower left, down here, that's presented for the species that we selected. At the top, here, we see the species name for this particular coccolith. In the middle, on this line here, we see the following information. Over on the left, we see there are three numbers, 8, 5, and 25. This tells us the core number, that's 8. 5 is the section number within the core, 
and 25 is the depth, in this case in centimeters, within that particular section. Next is listed the reporting author, in this case A.R. Edwards, and finally we see the report volume and page number that documents this species. At the bottom, this row here, we see information that we've already described and that relates to the position of the cursor in the range chart window. So as we move the cursor vertically, we see that the numbers on that bottom line change accordingly. In the lower right of the range chart window, here, we see three hyperlinks that take us to external databases that also provide further information about the species. For example, if we click on the link for the Kronos portal here, a Kronos webpage related to that species now appears. Finally, the four buttons at the top of the range chart window are links to more information about this hole. Clicking on the genus link up here takes us to the genus database page of Texas A&M and displays a summary of the hole and cores. The Kronos button here takes us to an information page about the range charts. In the middle, the logs button is currently inactive. And finally, the initial report button here opens the table of contents for that particular leg and we see that each of the sections is a hyperlink. More information on GeomapApp can be found at www.geomapapp.org.